Jimmy Greaves is one of the greatest strikers the English game has ever seen. In a career spanning over 20 years, he turned out for the likes of Chelsea, AC Milan, Tottenham and West Ham, scoring over 400 goals over the course of his career. Jimmy Greaves is a legend in English football, and his story is a bittersweet one, full of triumph, but sadly, great deals of tragedy too. This is a story of Jimmy Greaves. It's a funny old game. James Peter Greaves was born on the 20th of February 1940 in Manor Park, London. He was scouted by Chelsea whilst playing football as a schoolboy, and would join the club as an apprentice in 1955. He was a marvel at youth level, scoring 51 goals in the 55-56 season, before an astonishing 122 the next campaign. He would sign professional terms with Chelsea in 1957, and made his debut later that year, where he would net in a 1-1 draw with Tottenham. Spectators were highly impressed with the 17-year-old's performance, and he continued his fine form. Manager Ted Drake decided to rest Greaves for six weeks from mid-November, as he didn't want the fame getting to the youngster's head. Greaves would return to the lineup on Christmas Day, where he netted four goals in a 7-4 win over Portsmouth. Greaves would finish the season as Chelsea's top scorer, with 22 goals in 37 appearances. Greaves would continue his fine form over the next few campaigns, netting 37 goals in all competitions in the 58-59 season, and scored 30 in the 59-60 season. He would also receive his first international cap in 1959, scoring in a 4-1 loss to Peru. In October 1960, he would score hat-tricks against both Northern Ireland and Luxembourg, as well as a hat-trick against Scotland the next year. Greaves scored 41 goals in 41 games for Chelsea in the 60-61 season, and in the process, a hat-trick against Man City made him the youngest player to reach 100 league goals, at the age of 20 years and 290 days. But by this point, Greaves was starting to grow frustrated. The goals Greaves was scoring kept getting cancelled out by the amount that Chelsea were conceding. They weren't challenging for titles, and Chelsea agreed to sell him as they were in need of the money. He was made captain for his final appearance for the Blues, and scored all four in a 4-3 win over Nottingham Forest. AC Milan bid £80,000 to Greaves, which was accepted by Chelsea. Greaves did have second thoughts about leaving London, and tried to cancel the move, but was unsuccessful, and would move to the San Siro. His time at Milan was unpleasant, as he felt the strict training regimes of Nerio Rocco did not allow him much personal freedom. He would fall out with Rocco, and was placed on the transfer list. He only played 14 times for AC Milan, but still notched 9 goals. In December 1961, Jimmy Greaves would sign for Jimmy Nicholson's Tottenham Hotspur. Spurs had just won the League and Cup double, and Greaves was keen to get his hands on some silverware. Greaves flew back into form, netting a hat-trick that included a bicycle kick on his debut against Blackpool. He scored nine goals as Tottenham reached the FA Cup final, where they would face Burnley. In only the third minute, Greaves would give Tottenham the lead, and Spurs would win 3-1. Tottenham had retained the FA Cup, and Greaves had the first winner's medal of his career. Greaves would then travel with England to Chile for the 1962 World Cup. He would play in all four of England's games, scoring in a 3-1 victory over Argentina, but the three Lions would be knocked out by Brazil in the quarter-finals. In 1963, he netted four goals against Northern Ireland, and a year after, he would become England's all-time top scorer with 35 goals. His impressive tally for Tottenham would continue as well. Greaves was the league's top scorer in 62-63 with 37 goals, and Tottenham also reached the Cup Winners' Cup final, where they would face Atletico Madrid. Greaves would score one and assist another, as Tottenham won 5-1 becoming the first English side to win a European trophy. Although Tottenham went through a period of transition, Greaves' place in the side was unaffected, as he netted 36 and 35 goals over the next two seasons. Greaves would win the FA Cup for a second time in 1967, as Tottenham beat Greaves' former employers Chelsea 2-1 in the final. Greaves had also gone to his second World Cup, which his side would be hosting. 
Cruz would play in all three of England's group games, but in the final match against France, he was on the receiving end of a nasty tackle from Joseph Bonnell. Greece acquired 14 stitches as a result and would be out injured for the next two rounds. Jeff Hurst took Greaves' place and netted the winner against Argentina in the quarter-finals. Greaves was declared fit for the final, but Alf Ramsey decided to not change a winning team. England won the final 4-2 and Jeff Hurst got a hat-trick. Greaves was devastated to miss out, stating, I danced around the pitch with everyone else, but even in this moment of triumph and great happiness, deep down, I felt my sadness. Throughout my years as a professional footballer, I had dreamed of playing in a World Cup final. I had missed out on the match of a lifetime, and it hurt. Due to the rules of the time, only players who played in the final would receive winner's medals, and as a result, Greaves missed out. Greaves played for England only three more times afterwards, and was an unused substitute for the 1968 European Championships. He would retire from international duty soon after, and Bobby Charlton would soon overtake his record goals tally for England. Greaves had his final great season for Tottenham in the 68-69 campaign, where he netted 36 goals in all competitions. These goals had helped him become Tottenham's all-time top scorer, as well as the all-time top scorer in the English First Division. The 69-70 campaign would be Greaves' last as a Tottenham player. He was dropped from the team after they were knocked out of the FA Cup, and never started a game for Tottenham again. He would leave Spurs in March 1970, in a swap deal with West Ham for Martin Peters. Greaves' time at Upton Park was the start of his decline. Although he scored twice on his debut for the Hammers, things soon went downhill. Upon believing the next day's fixture against Blackpool had been called off due to a frozen pitch, Greaves would go to a pub with some of his teammates, and consume 12 pints of lager before returning to the hotel in the early hours of the morning. The match did in fact go ahead, and West Ham lost 4-0. Greaves blamed the defeat on some of his teammates, saying they weren't good enough. Greaves' descent continued, as his love for the game began to fade. He was known for often going straight from training to a pub in Romford, and he would remain there until last orders. Greaves left to West Ham in 1971, and did not play football or attend a match for the next two years. His alcoholism got out of control, as he would drink around 20 pints of beer in a day, and a bottle of vodka in the evening. The issues with the bottle caused him and his wife to temporarily separate. He would eventually return to football, and spent time playing in the lower leagues, turning out for the likes of Brentwood, Chelmsford, Barnet, and Woodford. By the time he joined Woodford, he had been hospitalised for his alcoholism, and he had managed to overcome an arduous battle and become sober, remaining so ever since. Greaves had remained in football, working as a columnist and pundit, and became close friends of former Liverpool striker Ian St John. From 1985 to 1992, he would be a co-host of the famous football show Saint and Greavesy. In 2009, after a campaign by the FA, Jimmy Greaves, along with all the other England squad members who did not play in the final, were presented with World Cup winner's medals. After over 40 years of anguish, Greaves finally had something to show for his contribution to the Three Lions. Greaves' health has sadly declined in recent years. He experienced two strokes in the 2010s, the latter of which left him unable to speak. Now he has carers attending him around four times a day, but his legacy will never be forgotten. Jimmy Greaves is, without question, a footballing legend. His goal-scoring tallies are phenomenal, and he remains England's fourth highest ever goal scorer, as well as Tottenham's all-time top scorer with 266 goals. Jimmy Greaves has unfortunately been blighted by tragedy, with his alcoholism, the loss of a child to cot death, his ill health, and missing out on a World Cup final. But it should not overshadow his incredible contribution to the game. In all his seasons at top-level football, he only scored less than 20 goals on five occasions, two of those being in the twilight years of his career. He blew away teams of his incredible goal-scoring instinct, and after retiring, brought joy to many with a Saint and Greavesy show that was incredibly popular. His career may not have exactly ended how he would have wanted it, but what he achieved will forever cement him as a legend in, as he would call it, a funny old game.